this brings me to a very important point. When, when I lift my hands here and I, and I take him into that turn or I lift his shoulder and you see this happen a lot in training where we pull towards us with our reins like this and we push the horse forward in the bridle with our legs. Well, to the outside, it seems like, hey, why is he just pulling and kicking? And that's what it looks like. And I think that's what sometimes many people just do. And that just doesn't make any sense at all. In order for that to be effective and to work, you always have to remember this very important factor is that you always work in diagonals. Even if you're turning or if you're going straight in a counter canter, whatever you're doing, you're always working in the diagonal. So you're prioritizing your outside leg and your inside hand at all times. So when you see me go here like this and forward and push him with my legs and pull him towards me like this to lift his shoulder and make him turn, okay? My focus is all on my outside leg and my inside hand. This is what this is how I pull him and this is how I remind him that, hey, you need to follow your nose and lift your shoulder through that turn. And the outside hand is only gonna be support and the inside leg is gonna be support and what, what helps me keep my forward motion, okay? So it's very important that if you see me pull here, it's gonna have a similar effect as when I did it this way, except that I'm pulling a little bit more towards me to lift that shoulder and I have the support of the outside ring. Okay, and release, go straight. Lift. There, see, he pushed down on me, got a little bit lazy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna push a little harder with my legs and remind him that, hey, he needs to work a little harder at this. There you go. Okay, and when I have it pretty good, I'm gonna change direction. Again here, I'm prioritizing my outside leg and my inside hand. Okay, remember what I said, horses are right-handed or left-handed. This horse is right-handed, so this is the side, the side he favors. He has a slight natural incurvation in his body on that side. So whenever I ask him to follow his nose and lift his inside shoulder and turn here, his first reaction is often to just stick his rib cage out first and then do it, which is not right because it's not, I need this body to be straight and pushing himself through the diagonal. So here, what I feel is that if I feel that rib cage come out, I'm just gonna bump a little harder with my outside leg and clock and insist until he makes the effort of, there you go, of lifting his shoulders and going, following me into that turn. So here, I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like he's, he's a little bit heavy into my hands and he's not really, really giving to me 100%. And the only reason that is, is because he's not really turning. He's not really following his nose into that turn. He's not following my body into that turn. So what I do to help myself here is I'm gonna pull a little bit harder on my inside rein. Okay, I'm gonna remind him that, hey, here, you remember you're supposed to follow your nose like this and lift your shoulder. You go and follow your nose. So this here is the basic. Now we're doing the same thing, but from here. There you go, that was good. Always precede your hands and always precede your hands with a little bit more leg and with your body movement. Remember the cue comes from your body. Eventually when your horse does this, just like here on the left, when your horse does this well, he follows, there you go, he follows your body, okay? Where I want to go, he goes, and he goes the right way, okay? So I'm only showing him how to use his body just to make the simple movement of trotting and following me into a small circle or a turn and then going straight, change direction, there you go. Whoa. There you go. So his head down there, his head low, is something that I'll tolerate if I feel that he's keeping his energy in his body and using his body through the turns and maintaining that energy in his body through the straight line. If I feel that after I release and then his head goes down and then he pushes into my, into my hands and his shoulders go down, then this is when I'm gonna lift him again and turn again right away and again and again until I can release him and I feel he keeps his, his body working and his neck can relax at this point because his body is working so there's no stress, no tension so his neck 
can relax and hang on his ligament here and this is what some horses like to do when they're working with their body so I'm gonna tolerate that and, 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 and encourage that I just don't want it to be him pushing down into my hand so don't let that happen if you feel that the head goes too down and the shoulders go down and every time you go to turn you feel like you have to lift something heavy in order to make the turn then that energy shifted back into the shoulders and into the neck and didn't stay where it belongs so you got to perform that turn again and again until you feel that that's the case and then when that is the case as basic as this may sound it is the perfect position to stop so even if you're just trotting a stop should be performed to perfection even when you're walking or trotting so but what you've done there is that you've put your horse in the perfect position to stop so this is what is key here because once once i once I make a turn and go straight here and that horse keeps that energy in his body and the drive coming from behind and the shoulders up and his body's in line, whoa, he's in a perfect position to stop, okay? So now, this is always, this is the point of this whole exercise, this is the goal. I'm doing this because I'm setting him up to do something. When I feel that he's in balance like that, if I could be loping and have my horse with that much drive and, and, and have his body that this lined up, with this, much, uh, uh, with this much perfection in how he uses himself, but at a low, then I know that I could do a knee change easily or I could ask him to make a good sliding stop. So my goal, again, this is what I call my comfort zone. So my goal is to put my horse into this comfort zone where he's using his body to the best of his ability, okay? Whoa. And then asking him to perform a maneuver. 